everyone. I know it's been a little while. We've um, cut back on doing these episodes to once a month because business has been insane, thankfully. Uh, there are a lot of productions being ramped up here in the LA area. And we also have um, a lot of online and uh, walk-in business, so I'm having a hard time keeping up with it all. But we wanted to do this episode because I am beginning the process of wanting to find permanent homes for things that I've been hanging on to for a long time. And prior to moving to Los Angeles in the late 80s through the early 2000s, I made my living by renting uh, my clothing to film and TV productions, um, as well as doing the Vintage Fashion Expo, which no longer exists. But in any case, um, during that course, that time period, I had the great pleasure of working with some of the most world-renowned costume designers, uh, present and past, and in the process of renting my pieces, pieces would come back with these things called hole tags, and we're going to show you an example of it, but this is the one for Almost Famous, where we're holding Kate Hudson's blouse that she wore and her skirt as Penny Lane. Um, and the whole tag mentions the scene, and um, at the time that this was filmed, it hadn't been titled yet, so it's called the Untitled Cameron Crowe Project. I also had the foresight to keep the actual uh, rental invoice to help um, uh, verify and authenticate the piece because this is not an uncommon blouse. In any case, um, I wanted to go through, um, I had to take notes because there's so much I want to say. Um, if I were to list all the great designers that I've had the pleasure of supplying clothing to and working with, we would probably have an hour plus episode. So I'm going to try and abbreviate it and not pontificate too much. Uh, this gorgeous gold lame that was designed by Edith Head, and for those of you, I'm sure every one of you knows who Edith Head was. She was truly the most important and the most powerful costume designer during the golden age of Hollywood through, um, I think, through the 60s or 70s. Um, she was nominated uh, numerous times, 34 times for an Academy Award, and actually won eight times. And I don't believe anyone else has even come close to that record. Um, she had um, an interesting beginning. She started at Paramount Studios, and uh, she worked dressing extras for Howard Greer, who is a very important costume designer as well, and one who's somewhat under the radar. And she progressed from that to work under Travis Batten, who's one of my personal favorites. Um, and there is a rumor that she actually got Travis Batten in trouble. And shortly thereafter, in 1938, she became the head of the costume department at Paramount, uh, the first woman head. And um, in 1944, she designed a costume for Ginger Rogers, which at the time was believed to be the most expensive costume that was ever produced. It had, um, it was a floor-length gown with a mink pelt train, and it's currently at the Victorian and Albert Archives. So Head went on to work with Grace Kelly, whose wardrobe to catch a thief um, was one of her favorite assignments, and she worked with Audrey Hepburn on two films, uh, which she won two Academy Awards, but interestingly enough, during those two films, which is Roman Holiday and Sabrina, uh, Givenchy is the one who designed Audrey Hepburn's pieces, and he was not credited. People know that, though. Anyway, Edith Head went on after Paramount to work for Universal Studios, and throughout her career, she received a lot of acclaim. So I don't really think we can find another designer living or dead, that can surpass her reputation. So it's an honor to actually have this piece in my collection. Um, I want to say there's so many amazing uh, designers pre-1960s. Um, so I'm sure you're familiar with Walter Plunkett, Adrian, Ori Kelly, I mentioned Travis Banton and Howard Greer, but Irene was also another important designer. and. 
I, I want to mention that um, Alois Jensen, who co-designed Samson and Delilah with Edith Head, was an actual friend of mine. She passed away in 2004, but she was 27 when she won her Academy Award with Edith Head. And most people are not familiar with her name. Not only was she a lovely person, but she also was the costume designer for I Love Lucy. So all of those iconic 1950s silhouettes that you saw specifically on Lucille Ball, but really, I mean, she, she was just incredible. And um, I definitely want to give her a mention because I feel like she was very important. Um, I want to also show you that we have on the racks a few pieces that I, that I own that have uh, lovely provenance. We'll start with um, this attribution. We're 99% sure this is Bob Mackie for Cher. She wore it in uh, her variety show with her husband. And uh, we actually have images of her in this. And I think studs were added after the fact, because in the photograph, um, it doesn't appear to have as many studs as this does. And then, moving right along, we have this beautiful nubby tweed suit that was um, worn in a beautiful mind by the main character, Alicia, who was the wife of the genius, Jennifer Connelly. And you can see it is, it's a strong piece, and that's what designers typically look for for principal actors. We also have Daniel Orlandi, who I worked with on uh, Apollo 13. That's the first film I ever worked, supplied costumes for him and Rita Ryak. This is a piece that Renee Zellweger wore in Down With Love. And Judiana Makovsky, who designed Pleasantville. This was Reese Witherspoon's skirt, really cute cat skirt. And uh, Judiana was mentored by Milena Cananero, who is a multi-academy award-winning costume designer, who I've also had the great pleasure of working with. And we have John Dunn, who designed the notorious Betty Page. This was Gretchen Maul's swimsuit. And John also worked on um, Boardwalk Empire and, I mean, so many period films, but um, I've done a lot of work with him. The first time I worked with him was when he was working with Rita Ryak on Casino. And, and then I have three pieces that Charlize Theron wore in The Legend of Bar Bagger Vance. This was also, the film is designed by Judiana Makovsky, and you can see a great 1930s silhouette on this, on this fabulous boucle suit. And then last but not least, this typical fabulous chiffon 30s bias dress. So um, I also have a clutch that she used in that film. So I want to mention that, you know, when you work with costume designers, it's just so much fun to watch their creative process. Um, Mark Bridges contacted me when he was doing Phantom Thread, looking for uh, couture gowns from that particular period, uh, which he then took to the director, and they, they used it as inspiration. Um, I, I really love working with costume designers in Ariane Phillips I've worked with and starting with um, Girl Interrupted. That was the very first film that we uh, connected on. Um, I've worked with Sandy Powell. I mentioned Milena Cananero, Michael Kaplan, um, Michael Wilkinson, Mitchell Travers, who did The Eyes of Tammy Faye and was nominated for an Academy Award this year. He's currently shooting George and Tammy. And I can just go on, Christine Wada, who did Our Flag Means Death. It, it's just such a joy to be in the epicenter of film and TV making and to be able to connect with these creative souls. And um, I wanted to share some of the pieces with you. 
And that being said, you know that I've established a relationship with Julian's auction. And I decided that part of my uh, process of letting go is putting these things up for auction. And they have a Hollywood auction coming up mid-July. And all of these items will be available then, and then some. I have a lot more that I'm including. But I wanted to share these with you and give you a little bit more Hollywood history. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, we'll be back in about a month. And uh, I hope you're all well and flourishing. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Let me remind you, if you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe. And uh, I do read your comments, although I've been really slack in commenting or replying on the ones that really should be replied to, so I apologize for that. But we've been really busy. So um, hopefully I get to meet you sometime soon in the store. And uh, until then, until next time, take care. Bye.